Well, last week we had a chance to talk about Trevor Spates, who some people, you know, I, I don't want to say don't think that he's one of the best running backs in the Valley uh, history. Right. But we've had, you know, a, a change. I mean, we've, we've got the modern day backs. Right. We've got the, the backs from the past. Right. How, do you, how do you compare those guys? Well, the first thing, like you say, is to, to divide the periods into one or two or three. You know, it's hard to judge a back, say, like Jimmy Lawrence from the 30s, who, from Harlington, who played in the NFL for four years. He was an amazing player, all, of, all conference at TCU. But if you put him in today's game, it'd be like trying to say, all right, Babe Ruth, with the skills that you have and nothing else, go on, try to hit that 92-mile slider. I don't think that would happen. You know, I really don't. So we put the, 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 the veteran guys into one group, and there's some uh, wonderful names. And then we start talking about the more modern era of football. So if you're going to talk about the best backs in the history of the Valley, it's really a two-tier argument. You know, you know I, I look at it. My father, you know, um, was, a, was an All-American in high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about this. Like, you know, the difference between now and then. You know, right. is it tougher? Was it, you know, what, what, are the, what are the differences? Because, you know, I look at it like Coach Poppy. Form, you know, Poppy former Rodriguez, athletic, uh, athletic director at Mackay. Mm -hmm. You know, he told me about how he played against Gene Upshaw in college. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know some some really tough guys. Man. And then you know, you have your, your present day backs: Meshack, Bradley, Trevor. Right, Ellis, Hunter, and the and the, and yeah. the list. What's okay, the change. What's, what's, the, what's change the, is, the change is this. You know, Poppy Rodriguez was in that that bridge era, early '60s. The game was still relatively, I wouldn't say ancient or primitive at all, but it hadn't changed the way it was going to change. And here's kind of the way it works. Uh, by the way, Poppy had 1,700 yards one year, and the Bears were a great team. That equates to about 2,500 today. So if you're talking about the backs of old, 1,000 yards was like 1,500 because the pace and the style of the game are different. That's the first thing I want to talk about today. Uh, in the old days. They, everybody ran the same offense. For a while it was a single wing, then it was the T formation that came in in the 40s, but you, could, you only had to work against one type of offense because there wasn't multiple things going on. Now, you could do certain things off the single wing, but the fact is everybody came at you, the action was in the box, you know what I mean by mm -hmm. that? Uh, with a single wing or with the T formation, a full house backfield, there were no wide outs. The game was played here, and so it was more physicality and force and will than it was a skill. Right. Yeah, and, and could you get away? Because now you can go with the spread and put a small back in the backfield, and you know just do draws and you know and you know little options. There wasn't as much room to do that. Uh, the game was not spread out yet. It wouldn't be till the wishbone and the veer in the '60s when we changed to a more wide open style and spread the field, and there got to be all kinds of option looks. Like I said, so the first factor is in the old days. Uh, it was more of a grind them out three yards in a cloud of dust offense. Even though the single wing had a certain amount of deception, it was who was going to knock the crap out of one another. And so, and here's another thing. The games, there weren't as many plays run back in the day. Okay, the games were not, they didn't have as many, uh, the games today are faster. And so you look at the numbers, the number of plays and this and that. Uh, one of the reasons why they don't have a ton of yards in the old days, 800 was an amazing season. 700 would win you all district. You'd be all state with 1,000. Now we've got 10 guys get 1,000 in any region, right? The game is quicker, the pace. The kids are, again, this is factor number two, the kids are bigger, faster, stronger. And you can't, you can't argue that. The kids are absolutely bigger, faster, stronger. And I would add this. Their training, their diet, uh, their health, their fitness, their specialization in coaches. You realize back when the guys played in the 30s and 40s, it was one or two coaches. One dude with the whistle and one with the bag of balls, right? So, I mean, there's no, there's no explaining. It's easy, or it's easy, easy to explain why backs have more yards now. There's more plays, more wide open offense, and everything is uh, set up in their favor. And one thing that I know that my father told me was that specialization. You didn't have specialization back then. You no, played, the coach was a coach. You know, guys coach played, they played basketball, they played football. Yeah. There was no, uh, I'm just going to be this. A football player, right, and go to camps and do all this weight training and stuff. Now, that's the thing. Uh, so the, the reason we mention these factors, the game has changed quite a bit. So if you look at guys from the 50s, they played in an entirely different context than they did in the 60s. That's why when you get a guy like Poppy, when you get a guy like Helms, when you get a guy like some of these guys who had amazing seasons back in the day, they really were that good. Now, you know, if you put them in modern times and gave them the skills and the training, etc., cetera, they'd probably be as good. But if you didn't, I mean, I think they'd be the first ones to admit that people are bigger, faster, stronger today. It doesn't make them tougher, but it certainly makes them more, uh, more athletic, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's the Shaquille O'Neal, Wilt Chamberlain kind of reference, you know. Yeah. You know, how do you compare two greats? I was thinking to myself, if there's anybody that you can't do that with, it might have been Bill Russell. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Because Bill Russell was Akeem before Akeem was Akeem. Now, he wasn't as smooth with the dream shake, but Bill Russell goes, what are we talking about basketball for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he, no, sorry about that. Uh, he's a guy who could probably play in any era, and there are not that many, uh, quite frankly. Now, okay, but what I wanted to do here, this is only part two, by the way. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a part three. We're going to keep him going here because we like that kind of stuff. People like it. We like it. I mean, hey, a little history is not going to hurt. I think a lot, actually a lot of people are interested. Yeah. Some of the great backs in the 70s. What I was thinking about on the way over here, uh, Jake, you can pick a city. We're going to play a game. You pick me a city, and I, I can tell you who the three or four great running backs in that city were, and a lot of people out there can because they really pay attention to that kind of thing. Yeah, they do because yeah. we saw it on the forums. But, look, let's just go McAllen. Like, right. We talk a lot about Memorial, the kid, Bradley Stevens, uh, you know, uh, Mario Molina, a good friend of mine who had a big year in 97. But Mac Allen's had its share of backs, too. I mean, after all, it's been a long way, you know, been around way longer. There was a guy named Mal Ramsey. They called him Dog because they were the Bulldogs. He played back in the 30s. That guy went up and down the field. They played eight or nine games. He probably had 600 yards, but he was considered one of the best backs in the Valley in the early days. There's a guy, now you remember Mike De La Fuente? Mm -hmm. Were you here? Uh, that guy, name. yeah, 1,800 yards in 2002. They've had a bunch of good backs, but the guy I wanted to bring up in McAllen, I'm sure it's going to make a lot of people happy. In 1988, they had a guy that led the state, 1,700 yards, a uh, very fast, very stylish runner. His name was Mark Morgan. And so, you know, if you're talking about the great backs of the last 20, 25 years, you, know, you go back a little further into the 80s. I don't even didn't do my math. That's 20 something. Uh, Mark Morgan was a phenomenal back. He went to TCU. He didn't pan out. But you know what? He had the talent. I don't know what was the problem there. But Mark Morgan is one of those guys that never gets enough credit. He was almost, I think he's in the same conversation, the top 10 or 15 with some of these cats like Meshack and Bradley. I really do. And people who were around at the time, I think, would agree with me. Well, I think we're going to have to come up with a list, I guess, of uh, your grace, maybe for part three. I don't well, know we part have. three is going to be interesting. We're going to talk a little bit more in specifics about great backs of the past and great backs of the present. And we'll probably, what I want to also do next time is talk a little bit. I've been watching a lot of video on the kid. When I sleep, I dream about him. He's so good, right? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I've been watching Bradley. They're different style of runners. Uh -huh. Bradley, well, we're going to put them on a continuum, right? We're going to have Bradley and Meshack, and The Kid, and Tony Ellis, and Fred Garza, Fred Laredo. We're going to throw in guys like Chris, Chris Castellanos from Rio Hondo. He had a bunch of yards, and maybe even Jimmy Heath, who was a bobcat back of note. So join us on, we haven't named this segment yet, what should we call it? Uh, OT? OT is good. Oh, a history OT or some such. When yeah. we come back next week, we're going to talk more specifics. But to keep in mind, today's situation was all about the fact that the game has changed drastically. I was going to draw the wishbone and the veer up on the on the board there yeah. and show you a little bit. Maybe we'll do that in section four. You guys out there who have interesting comments about backs, don't worry you guys in MMA, I'm gonna be mentioning Derek Logan because he was 6'2", 225, he ran a 4'5", and he ran over everybody. We'll be back next time. All right. Yeah.